December. Peter. Last month, Mr. T told us we had to read some stupid book and go spend time with the retards. That was what I thought first, anyways. That was what I had always thought. The collaborative classroom was where the retards went to school. I guess it was James who made me change my mind. I mean, the summer of the swans was okay, sort of, but the collaborative classroom wasn't what I thought, wasn't what I thought at all. The kids were actually pretty cool, especially James. If something's built on the floor, or if there was a bunch of objects spread out on the table, he could tell you how many were there just by looking at them. I mean it. He could tell you immediately. No counting required. No matter how many there were, 312 forks or 813 Legos, he always got it right, and James was kind of cool to hang out with. He gave me low fives, not high fives, because eye contact was tough for him, and we played games. I liked going to see him. So I liked Mr. T's next idea. He never ran out of ideas. Okay, guys, here's the deal, he told us in December. We're going to have a holiday party like every other class, but it's going to be different. Of course, I blurted out. That's no surprise, but I do I do that sometimes. Open my mouth before thinking. A lot of times, actually. Everybody, even Mr. T, cracked a smile because I was right. You'll form small groups and work to create a center focused on a certain holiday. It might be Christmas, Ramadan, Kwanzaa, or Hanukkah. Mr. T kept going with the directions, but I didn't catch most of it. I was thinking. Then I did that blurt out thing again. Mr. T, can we invite James and his friends to our party? Everyone was quiet and looking at me. Then Jessica said, that's a great idea, and the rest of the class agreed. Mr. T had a smile stretched across his face. He just nodded, and I thought I saw him wiping his eyes. I don't know why he did that, though. Jessica. Act 4, Scene 1. I chose Ramadan as my holiday. I wanted to research something I knew very little about. I ended up in a group with Anna, Danielle, Jeffrey, and Alexia. Alexia wanted to be with Katie, Wendy, Natalie, and Heather, but Mr. Terrip didn't go for that. If he was looking for trouble, he got it. Our task was clear. When Mr. Terrip announced the project, he said, Your centers will need to include a research component, a game, an arts and crafts activity, and food. Your center will need to operate all by itself because you'll be visiting the other center centers when people come to visit yours. My group started talking about who would do who could do what, but Alexia didn't let that go on too long. Like, you need to do the research, Jessica, because, like, you're the smartest. Anna's too stupid to read that stuff. Anna stared at the floor. She used to do a lot of that, but not as much these days. I, it wasn't just her head that went down this time. Her entire body sagged after Alexia's nasty comment. Alexia looked at Jeffrey next, but she didn't have the nerve to say anything. Then she smiled at me and, and Danielle. She got nothing in return from me, but I could see Danielle half-smiling. Jeffrey and I collaborated on the research while Anna and Danielle were in charge of designing the arts and crafts activity. I wanted to work with Jeffrey. I had shared my secret with him, and he needed another chance to share his with me. Anna and Danielle had done fine together with the plants, so I knew they'd work well together this time. Plus, I hoped Danielle would become friends with Anna, despite her grandmother's warnings. Alexia named herself as our group manager. According to her, she was responsible for overseeing all of our work, or as she put it, like, I'll just watch and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. I'll be like our manager. I think she meant boss. We went along with Alexia's grand plan because it was easier not to have her involved in our task, but that wasn't good enough for Alexia. No, she tried her best to get everyone mad at each other. That's what she was all about. Act 4, Scene 2. One day during project time, I was meeting with Jeffrey and Anna, discussing how to put t our center together. Danielle was nearby organizing the arts and crafts materials that she and Anna had been working tirelessly to create. Then Alexia made her move. Like, don't you guys think Danielle should be in charge of the food? Alexia said loud enough for Danielle to hear. I braced myself for what was coming next. I mean, just look at her. Like, she's so fat. She must be good with food. Danielle hurried out of the room. None of us said or did anything. It was as if we thought pretending nothing had happened would make everything better. It didn't. My turn to be hurt came next. Alexia didn't spare me. Act 4, Scene 3. Jeffrey and I decided that making a trivia game about Ramadan was the perfect way for people to learn about our holiday and what we'd researched. It took loads of work. We had just finished writing all our research as questions on the trivia cards. Enter Alexia. She must have just come from the bathroom. She wore fresh, shiny lip gloss and chewed on a new piece of gum. She prated over to us with an exaggerated hip motion in her jean skirt and zebra tights, bent down, and grabbed some of the trivia cards. She looked them over, but I don't think she read any, read any of them. She snapped her gum that she wasn't supposed to have. Like, nobody's going to understand these questions. She stared right at me. Nobody ever in understands you. Not with all your stuck-up words. Like, you just want to make everyone feel stupid. You think you're so smart. She flicked the card at me. That wasn't true. I didn't try to do that. Act 4, Scene 4. Enter Mr. Terrapt. Alexia? I looked up. I didn't even know he was there. Alexia didn't either. She spun around, alarmed. I think it's time for you to follow me. He escorted her out of the room. They were gone for a while. Act 4, Scene 5. Enter Mr. Terrapt without Alexia. Where was she? I need to talk to the four of you now, he said, looking at Jeffrey, Danielle, Anna, and me. We sat down in our project area. 
I've watched Alexia be unpleasant to all of you. I hope that none of you was going to stand up. I hope that one of you was going to stand up to her and tell her to stop. You didn't. I looked down. I knew I should have done something. I wasn't strong like the friends in my books. If you let people get away with being mean, they're going to keep being mean. You need to stick up for each other. Even Alexia isn't tough enough to make fun of you. Not if all four of you stick together. I could feel Mr. Terrip's eyes on me. He leaned forward, trying to peer into my face. He tried to make eye contact with each of us. We all stared at the floor. You should be disappointed, he said. You should stand by each other. That's what being friends is all about. Still, we sat quiet. Anna wiped her eyes. So did Danielle. Don't sit and pout, Mr. Terrip said. That won't help anything. You need to keep working. Learn from this and don't make the same mistake again. Exit, Mr. Terrip. Act 4, Scene 6. What was Jeffrey thinking, I wondered. What were Danielle and Anna feeling? I'm never talking to Alexia again, Danielle said. Me either. Me neither, Anna added. That's no better, I said. We don't have to be friends with her, but we can't shut her out. We have to be bigger people. I looked down again. I felt as disappointed in myself as Mr. Terrip did in all of us. I wasn't brave enough. Luke. Our bathroom posi is positioned directly across the hall from our classroom. Who cares, right? I'd never thought anything of it until the day I felt trapped out there. I saw the shakedown, dollar word, all compliments of Peter. I was in the classroom working on my holiday center. All my materials were spread out on the floor, and I was busy calculating the proper dimensions for my game board. Mr. Terrett was on the other side of the room checking in with a different group. I didn't notice Peter. I stretched out on my belly and worked the math. The soles of my sneaks pointed up, a great invitation for messing around with Peter. For messing around Peter. I never felt a thing. He's definitely sneaky. I sometimes wonder what's the likelihood, dollar word, Peter will grow up to be a world-famous thief. I had no clue anything was even happening. Until I heard the giggling and Peter said, Hey Luke, what kind of sneaks are those? Elmer's? I popped my head up. What are you talking about? Better be careful. If you try to go anywhere in those, you might get stuck. I looked back at my feet. Mess around Peter had struck. The bottoms of my sneakers were completely covered in Elmer's glue. You jerk, I said, without any real authority. Truth is, I didn't really care. It wasn't worth getting upset over. Besides, I'm sort of used to Peter's antics. I thought they were always harmless. I untied my shoes and placed them next to me. Bottoms up, of course, until I finished my math. Peter's victory celebration was cut short by my easy solution. Maybe I don't get upset with Peter because I know I'll always outwit him. This drives him nuts, and I love it. Once I finished my calculations, I grabbed my sneakers and headed to the bathroom. Mr. Terrip was still busy with a different group, so he didn't see any of Peter's shenanigans or me leaving the classroom. I held my shoes under the sink and washed off the glue. Then I wiped the soles dry with a paper towel and put my sneakers back on. I pushed the bathroom door open and quickly jumped back inside. I was trapped. Mr. Terrip was having a conference with someone out in the hall. I pushed the door open just to crack to see who it was. You've done it your way, he said. Mr. Terrip had his back to me. He was leaning forward, talking to the person against the wall. Now you'll do it my way. He straightened up and folded his arms. He meant business. And that was when I saw who it was. Black and purple streaks covered her cheeks, a combination of her makeup and tears. Alexia, crying. I had never seen or heard of Alexia crying before. I like you, Lexi. I want some of your classmates to like you, too. I'm trying to help. I want you to be friendlier, dollar word. I will not tolerate your meanness anymore. Wow, was this really going to work? Go in the bathroom and wash your face. Come back when you're ready. Is there anything you want to say before I go back in? Alexia stormed past Mr. Terrip without looking at him and without saying a word. Mr. Terrip let out a big sigh and shook his head. Then he walked back into the classroom. I wonder what he was thinking. I decided not to say anything about my sneakers. It didn't seem important. Mr. Terrip had more serious matters on his plate, like discipline, dollar word. I waited a few minutes before following Mr. Terrip into the classroom. I didn't want to seem obvious. I didn't want it to seem obvious that I'd been eavesdropping, but I was eager to tell somebody about what I'd just seen. That's why I think I walked into the classroom a little rushed and wasn't really paying attention. Even if I had been, I pro it probably wouldn't have. It probably would have happened. I barely walked through the door before I stepped in a puddle of water. My feet went up and my arms flew out. I flailed like an ostrich trying to catch its balance. Somehow I managed to stay upright, and after sliding across the linoleum floor to the carpet, Mr. Terrip was having a serious conversation with Jessica, Danielle, Jeffrey, and Anna, so he didn't see any of this. But Peter, Ben, Nick, and some of the other guys rolled around in hysterics. I knew what they had done. Or should I say what Peter had done? He likes to put his thumb over the opening of the drinking fountain, dollar word, and push the button. It's another one of his famous stunts. This one makes the water shoot out all the way to the door. That was how the puddle miraculously appeared on the floor. When Peter meant to have the water on, whether Peter meant to have the water on the floor or if it just ended up there after he sprayed someone else, I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. I didn't have time to do anything about it because someone else came through the door just after me. She must have been making her rounds, going from cla from class to class just to visit for a few minutes. Today was her unlucky day. unlucky day. Mrs. Williams took one step in our classroom and hit the water. I felt sorry for her. She was wearing a navy blue suit, a jacket and skirt with high heels. She wasn't able to keep her her balance. Her foot shot way 
out to the side, and as soon as it touched the puddle, I thought she was going to do a split, but then her other foot touched the water and slid forward. Miss Williams fell backward with her arms grabbing empty air. She landed smack on her back, right in the water, with her legs stuck in the air. That was when I saw my principal's underwear. I couldn't believe it. I knew I shouldn't keep staring, but I couldn't look away. All, we all gawked at her multicolored flower underwear, and that's not the best of it, or the worst of it, if you're Mrs. Williams. Her underwear was a, bis, a bit discombobulated. In other words, she had a wedgie. It was unbelievable. I'll never forget it, not as long as I live. I swear it. It was the day I saw my principal's underwear and more. Mr. Terrett rushed over to help her. The rest of us fought to keep from laughing. It was our principal, after all. Even Peter wasn't snickering. He actually looked nervous. Mrs. Williams, are you okay? Mr. Terrett said, helping her to her feet. Peter, get some towels to wipe this water up. Why did he pick Peter? Because he knew Peter's antics led to the water being on the floor. I'm sure it was his way of letting Peter know he knew. I'm okay, Mrs. Williams said, brushing herself off and smoothing out her clothes. Sorry for the interruption. She turned and left. How embarrassing. As soon as the door closed behind her, the laughter and whispers started. Clearly, this can't happen again, Mr. Terrip said. We're lucky Mrs. Williams didn't get hurt or that someone else didn't either. I expect we won't have water pulled on the floor like that again. Mr. Terrip looked directly at Peter after saying this. Yep, he knew. He shook his head, then walked over to his desk. I thought for sure this event would be unequal, dollar word, by any other for the rest of the year. Little did I know that something much bigger was coming our way. Alexia. Teach was like, Alexia, I think it's time for you to follow me. I went into the hall with him. He closed the door behind us. Teachers had done this stuff with me before. It was like, no big deal. I didn't even give Teach a chance. They're being so mean to me, I blurted out. They won't let me do anything. Jessica thinks like she's the boss. But this is where Teach was different again. Wrong, he said. Stop. But he put both hands up. Just stop, he said. I was quiet. He looked right at me. You're lying, and I don't like liars, he said. You're being mean, and I don't like mean people. I felt real tears coming. I didn't want to cry, not for real. I squeezed my teeth together and scrunched my eyes. I held my purse hard with both hands. You're acting like the meanest girl I've ever seen, he said. I couldn't help it. The tears came. I was really upset. I looked down at the floor. I'm not being unreasonable, Lexi. I was like, yes, you are, but I didn't say anything. I'm telling you the truth, and sometimes the truth can hurt. I kept my head down. I pulled a tissue from my purse and wiped my eyes. He was being a bully. I know you're not mean deep down inside, Teach went on, so stop, act, stop acting like you are. Miss Kelsey has told me some amazing things about you in her room. He didn't get it. Nobody was going to be my friend. I know because that's how it was before. Kids made fun of me because of my clothes, because of how I talked. Leopard Lexi and Lexi-like, they called me. And then one day in third grade, I attacked back. I yelled at some girl like Mom and Dad yelled at each other, and after that, no one wanted to be friends with her. It didn't matter that what I said was a lie. They ditched her and became my friends instead. Just like that, I became the leader. All of a sudden, I was getting all kinds of attention, unlike at home. Mom was around, but usually too upset over Dad, because he was never around, to worry about me. And then last year, she, like, hit her limit and threw Dad out of the house. Mom told me then, Alexia, don't let people push you around like your father did to us. You take charge and fight back, so there's no way I'm going back to being nice. Nobody's going to make fun of me again. I don't remember anything else Mr. Terrip said. I was too mad to listen. I hate you, Mr. Terrip. Jeffrey. Did it help? Asked Jessica, I asked Jessica one day in our Ramadan group. We were just doing some research on the computer. What, she asked. Did Telen help like Ida B.? I think it helped a little, she said. I stared at the computer. I'm listening, she said. You won't tell anyone, I said. I won't tell, she said. Promise, because nobody knows any of this. I just moved here last year, halfway through the school year, and nobody knows anything about me. I won't tell, she said again. I'm not sure why I believed her, but for the first time ever, I told someone my secret. My brother's name was Michael. The football cards were his. He was older than me. He had Down syndrome and leukemia and was real sick, so my parents had me in order to save him. I could feel Jessica looking at me after telling her that last part, but I kept staring at the computer. They gave Michael my stem cells, special cells that can turn into anything else in your body, hoping that they would become what Michael needed. It worked for a while, but then he got sick again. He was in and out of the hospital a lot, so that's how I learned about kids with special needs. I stopped. The computer was quiet. Jessica hadn't pushed anything on the, on the keyboard. She was listening. Then the summer before the fourth grade, I gave my bone marrow to Michael. It was his last chance. Everything else had failed. I stopped again. My throat was tightening around the lump in it. I was, it was going to be hard to tell the rest. What happened, Jessica said. It worked, but not fast enough. Michael got sick before his body could fight the cancer off. It, I didn't save him. The screens ever bounced around. I stared at it. Then Jessica said something no one had ever said to me before. It's not your fault, Jeffrey. I got up and walked to the bathroom. I had to. Anna. 
I never had a teacher stick up for me before. I get picked on and made fun of, and my teachers never did anything. Maybe because I never did anything either. I didn't cry or get upset. I just stayed quiet. Maybe it seemed like I didn't. It didn't bother me, but nobody's skin. Nobody's got skin that thick. Mr. Terrip did something. I loved him for that. He wasn't real happy about it, though. He wanted us to do the sticking up for each other. I didn't know if I could do that, but with Jessica and Danielle by my side, I knew I'd try. Mr. Terrip was right about that. Things were much easier in our group after the whole Alexia incident. She came back quiet and remained quiet for the rest of the day, and every day after that, I knew she was feeling bad. A lot of girls had felt the same way because of her. So I figured it was only fair, but it bothered me too. Mom has always told me, we don't have enough days to waste being upset or sad. You've got to be happy and have fun, Anna. I think Mom's positive attitude is pretty, pretty amazing, especially after all she's been through. And I think she's right. We weren't mean to Alexia, but we left her alone. I hope she'd be different now that Mr. Terrap has held a conference with her. During the time we worked on our center, I found the courage to do something I hadn't ever done before. One day during recess, while doing some stick sketching in the dirt, I took a deep breath and plunged ahead. Would you guys like to come over to my house for a play date? I asked Jessica and Daniel. Daniel. Jessica looked up. I'd love to, she said. She glanced at Danielle, who kept her head down and continued ske sketching. Danielle's really good at drawing, so I thought maybe she just wanted to finish her sketch. Snap. Her stick broke in half. But I'll need to check with my mom first, Jessica added. Me too, Danielle said, but she still didn't look up. Let me ask my mom. You don't have to come over if you don't want to, I said to Danielle. No, I want to, she said, looking right at me this time. I believed her, and then she looked away. But I need to get permission. The recess whistle blew. Danielle had drawn three girls holding hands in the dirt. I smiled. They both wanted to come over. I just hoped their mother said yes. Danielle. The holiday centers turned out great. It was a lot of hard work, especially with Alexia in our group, but Mr. Terrip took care of her. She wasn't the same after that. She, came, she became real quiet, which helped us get our center put together smoothly. Jessica and Jeffrey completed the trivia game. They came up with some really great questions. Luke loved playing playing it when he visited our holiday. He said he learned a lot from it, which Mr. Terrip was happy to hear. Mr. Terrip hung around our center because of the cook cookies. I made them, even after what Alexia said about me. My mom and grandma helped me find a recipe that used cumin, which is spice. The three of us spent a lot of time together in the kitchen. It was the perfect opportunity to ask about going to Anna's, but I just couldn't get myself to do it. The best part of our holiday centers, took, uh, holiday centers day took place when our collaborative friends visited. That was Peter's great idea. Some of the games were hard for them, but we all helped. They were able to do the crafts and eat special foods like my cookies. James liked our craft project where you had to cut thin strips of paper and staple rings together to make a long chain. The chain is a calendar to help you count down the days of Ramadan, which can be 29 or 30 days long. Our chain included way more links than, the, than that because our guests kept adding them. 137, James said after eyeing the chain for just a few seconds. Then he started adding, attaching more links. James really liked the surprise I had for him. I put together a collection of photographs of Middle Eastern farms and farming. He sat down and started talking about them and setting them. Seeing James like this made me happy. Jeffrey surprised us. Once Joey showed up, Jeffrey pulled out this little memory game that he had made with pairs of matching cards with different Ramadan pictures on them. He and Joey played. It was a super wonderful day. Mr. Terrett was smiling. So was I. Jessica. Act 5, Scene 1. Hi, honey. How was school? Mom asked as I climbed in the car. Mom was great about giving me rides home whenever she could. Some kids like Jeffrey had to ride the bus every day. Mom's trying to get serious about her writing. She's already very skilled at it, having helped on some of Dad's plays back in California, but now she's writing for herself. That's why she's free in the afternoons to pick me up sometimes. We're lucky to have enough money so that my mom doesn't have to get a steady job right now. She can actually pursue her passion. I hope I can do that someday, too. Mom did get a part-time job at a local bookstore so she can interact with people and keep her mind from wandering back to California. My mind still wanders back there, but not like it did a few months ago. My dad hasn't called again. School was fine, I said. I buckled my seatbelts and away we drove. Mom, you've heard me talk about Anna and Danielle, right? Yes, is something wrong? Mom stepped on the brakes harder than usual and we jerked to a halt at the stop sign. I shook my head. Nothing's wrong, I said. I looked my way. Close, coast is clear. Mom eased off the brakes. Anna asked Danielle and me to come over to her house. That's great, Jessica, Mom said. Yes, but I know Danielle won't be going. How do you know that? I filled Mom in on what I knew about Anna's mother. I explained why Danielle's mom wouldn't allow Danielle to associate with the likes of Anna. Mom turned right on the, onto our road. Well, I'm not, not going to say no just because Anna's mother made a mistake once. We pulled into our driveway and Mom put the car in park. If Danielle's a nice girl, I bet her mother is too, Mom said. But we'll make up our own minds about what kind of person Anna's mother really is. Dad made a mistake. You didn't want to give him another chance, I said. Your father didn't want another chance, Mom said. He made that clear before we left. She paused. The divorce papers came today. I sat all quiet. Mom's bluntness really zapped me. I'm sorry, honey, Mom said. I'm sure your father will call soon. I shrugged. You don't need a lie to make me feel better. 
Okay, you're right, she sighed. I've always been honest and upfront with you. Another sigh. I don't know if he'll call. 